New York style setter Tori Burch is being hailed as the next big thing in fashion. Tori Burch. Tori Burch. Tori Burch. Tori Burch. When we start to think about every collection, I think inspiration really comes from all over. Art exhibits and traveling and something that I always go back to is American sportswear. From the 60s and on, the clean classic lines with special details. And I thought, wow, how great would it be to take that detail and interpret it in women's wear today? My parents have always been the inspiration and DNA of this company. My mom had this incredible joie de vie. My dad was such a perfectionist, and he had the most amazing style. I love unusual mixes of color. I love print, and I love mixing them together, and prints that don't necessarily go together, I like putting together and making them work. When we started to think about designing our first store, I wanted it to be a different retail experience. And I wanted someone to feel as if you're walking into a home and feel comfortable and welcome. We have many details that have become our signature. We have the orange lacquer doors, we have brass, we have lucite. In our Madison store, we have a whole area that was inspired by Madeleine de Castaing. In 2009, we opened our first flagship store in Tokyo, and since then, we've opened Rome, London, Korea, Philippines, and Dubai. We're opening in South America and Brazil, we're opening in Turkey and Beirut, we're opening in Toronto, and we're also going to be looking at Germany and Paris. We have so many exciting things on the horizon for our brand. We've just announced a partnership with Estee Lauder, and we have been thinking about this for five years. We'll be doing a fragrance and beauty, and it's such a natural extension of our brand. When we launched ToriBirch.com seven and a half years ago, it's very unusual to have that as well as a store. So we really were on the forefront of learning about e-commerce. Social media is a great way for us to really learn about our customer and get honest feedback. We have Twitter and Facebook on the homepage. We have an incredible blog that we look at as an online magazine. It's all original content. We're very happy to announce the launch of the Tory Burch Foundation. We are working on helping women get small loans to start their businesses here, and there's a big need, and it's so exciting to see how our company is really having a play in that. I've lived my life where I've taken chances, and if I believe in something, I go for it. Uh, my name is Rhonda Stites, and I'm the head of the industry solutions team and the head of retail for Google Enterprise. Welcome to our Hangout on Air, Retail in the Age of the Digital Workplace. This is a series of live Hangouts on Air where we've been talking to CXOs from leading organizations such as Netflix, the Weather Channel, Samina, and Briggs at Stratton, how they're leveraging technology to disrupt the, the norm for their organizations. Today, we are joined by a team of people from Tory Birch to talk about how they are leveraging technology to digitally transform their entire organization from online to in-store to all of their business processes. So please join me in welcoming Mike Teresi, who's the CIO of Tory Birch, Serge Manassas, oh, uh, Manassan, who is the VP of IT for Tory Birch, and Hawina Ali, who is a manager and part of the business transformation team at Tory Birch. Now, before I get started, we'd really like to hear from you. So please, um, on all your social comments, put hashtag gone Google so that we can hear directly from you. So Mike, uh, to start us off, can you provide an overview of Tory Birch's business model and fill us in about uh, what Tory Birch has been up to? Sure, well, thanks very much, Rhonda. It's great to be here. And thanks everyone for joining the Hangout on Air. I wanna thank both Serge and Helena for joining me in this discussion. I have the honor of representing the team and. We're incredibly proud of what we're doing here at Tory and feel really good about the progress that we're making. Just to start a bit with about uh, a little bit about Tory Burch, the company, I think the initial uh, presentation helped me capture some of the key elements. But for those who may not know, Tory Burch is an American lifestyle brand that launched in 2004 with one boutique in the meatpacking district in Manhattan on Elizabeth Street. The company and its line really embody the personal style and personality of our CEO and designer, Tory Burch. The brand is well recognized around the world 
for color, print, and eclectic details. Some of the most popular products in addition to clothing include shoes, handbags, accessories, and beauty products. That presentation is a bit dated in the sense that we've actually launched our product with Estee Lauder, and in fact, it's been really successful, and we're happy to see the launch take off. And we're doing some interesting things with companies like Fitbit and other organizations to innovatively expand our brand and think about how we can fill need states for women who want to be feeling fit and fashion forward while still living within the Tory lifestyle. In just 10 years, the company has grown to a global business with more than 120 freestanding boutiques and a presence in more than 3,000 department and specialty stores. As, as the video indicated, social responsibility has been a priority for Tory since the very beginning. The foundation helps women entrepreneurs through loans, mentorship, and education. And Tory was recently appointed by President Obama to his team of presidential ambassadors for global entrepreneurship. Quite an honor, and, and we're very proud of that of that nomination and and and, and uh, recognition. From a, a digital perspective, our largest store is ToryBirch.com, and as a matter of fact, it actually launched on the onset of the business. We also do things like the Tory blog, Tory blog, an online magazine with all original content, and we work hard to stay at the forefront of digital innovation because that's what our customers connect with, and it's important that we focus on our customer. We have regional websites in Europe and Asia, along with an app called Tory Daily, which has been downloaded over 300,000 times. When I joined Tory in 2011, you know, many of the questions and challenges we were facing, what is the role of IT and how are we going to enable the operational strategies and help our business grow and evolve? On the slide, you'll see that we have a model representing you know, three primary areas of focus, foundation, innovation, and differentiation. Ultimately, we have to be able to transact and execute the business in a high quality and efficacy oriented way, and those transactions need to work. So we are doing things like SAP and programs like ERP globally to ensure that we can properly control and execute against those activities. However, the innovation piece in many ways is very, very critical because it's not just about innovating in terms of the customer experience, it's innovating against all facets of our business. So how we design, how we plan, how we merchandise, how we manufacture, and how we ultimately deliver our value chain back to our, our customer is all critical, and aligning the organization against that is a differentiating capability. As we create programs out of innovation that become differentiating capabilities, we then roll them back into our foundational capabilities so we consistently elevate and evolve our foundational skill sets so that we're ultimately able to deliver against this experience that our customer is expecting. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for that overview of, of the business and uh, some of the things that you have going on in IT. Sounds like you're certainly busy. Uh, you know, Tory Burch has been a phenomenal, uh, seen phenomenal growth over the last 10 years. And, um, you know, for our audience, can you share what do you attribute that, uh, that growth and that success to? Well, I think beyond how we think about the business from an innovation and you know, we've borrowed some of the things from your culture at Google in terms of failing fast and trying different things and not being afraid to enter into a space that will feel a little bit uncomfortable, <laughs> but ultimately lead to great learnings. Customer focus is, is at our absolute core on everything we do, and we structure our business around that customer experience. We want to make sure that our customers have the right product when they want it, and that they enjoy a cohesive, consistent, and personal experience with the brand. We've done a tremendous amount of innovation in store in terms of linking this concept of digital between online and in-store activity. And, and our focus is really, it's not, I, would, I know we talk about omni-channel and it's one of these words that gets a little bit overused at times, but we're really about one channel and we want the customer to feel like regardless of where she's touching the brand, even as much as we possibly can influence in wholesale, that it feels very much like the Tory experience. And through the innovation of the technology that we've been able to implement in our stores and online, by linking these two and these, these multiple experiences and all these data points together, we're able now to help predictively uh, provide reference and information on what they might want before they ask. And we're actually able to help people figure out where they might want to go with the brand. And obviously it helps us massively from an R&D perspective. So you know, digital, quite honestly, is how we lead with, with our business. And, and, all, and if we didn't do that, I, I don't know how we, quite frankly, would compete successfully. Great, uh, Mike. So you're you're 
strategy of leading with digital um, and focusing on the customer has really paid, has definitely paid off. So let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about the industry at large um, and what's going on within the industry. So as you can uh, see from the, the slide, you know, what we've seen is that, uh, especially in the luxury space, uh, digital has had a profound impact on luxury buyers. In fact, 78% of luxury consumers do research online before they make a purchase. Um, but 82% uh, of the purchases are still happening in the store. So just like you were talking about, your in-store experience is still super critical, especially for, for you know, Tory Burch. Um, but uh, digital definitely has had an impact on the store, specifically around store traffic. So, you know, let's, let's take a look, look at uh, what's going on within store traffic or what we're seeing within stores. So um, on the this next slide, you can see that um, we're looking at two different things here as far as traffic goes. Um, from uh, 2010 to 2013, what we've seen is that as far as the number of people, the actual people going into stores, it's declined very significantly, around 55%. Uh, percent. But when you compare that with retail sales for that same period, you see that sales are actually up. So while it might look a little bit alarming for retailers to look at that decline in traffic, sales overall offline are up 9%, 75% e-commerce for a total net gain of 15%. So what we've seen, and I think what you talked about, is that um, when people do get into the stores, they're very purposeful, they know what they want, and they run a really good integrated customer experience, um, that that inventory is in the store, the store associate knows who they are, they can personalize for them, um, uh, and that's that's really critical. So uh, what, uh, what McKinsey is saying is that we're really entering this kind of new wave of digital transformation. Um, where uh, this new area of digital is about enabling the entire organization uh, to be digital. So well beyond just the, the customer and the store, the consumer experience, but how you guys are taking digital across your supply chain, your inventory levels, uh, providing your uh, employees, your designers, et cetera, with mobile devices so that they can work anywhere and quickly get um, activities done so that they compete. Uh, so this is what really uh, Google's really focused on, and I think uh, what we'll be talking about today and some of the things specifically that you've been able to accomplish. So um, we're really focused on working with retailers around our entire uh, cloud platform, our entire enterprise suite, so that they can bring digital, um, which is a critical component and enabler for an IT leader such as yourself to enable the, the organization. And we've been able to you know, help organizations such as you on in-store, mobile, as well as you know, bringing that to various business functions. So, um, can you share with the audience a little bit about um, how you're thinking about this, and as an IT leader, what you've been able to do? Well, I think from the, those, those slides that you referenced, we we happen to be in complete alignment and can confirm, particularly from a mobile perspective, we're seeing that 78% of our content is being digested on mobile devices, both tablet and phones, and there's no question. And what you're referencing is what we call showrooming, is that in essence, individuals and clients are able to learn so much about the brand and really experience it in a digital format so that when they actually come to that point of purchase, they're well informed. And in fact, they've actually shopped well beyond the brand content that you're providing. As a matter of fact, what we're seeing is a lot of referential selling, i.e. individuals from YouTube and people who are bloggers who are considered experts in a certain space and those individuals have tremendous influence in terms of how people see the brand and experience certain styles and matches so we're we want to learn from that and quite honestly make sure we can understand why people are reacting to this this, this content in the manner in which they are so we can effectively deliver that experience i think it's clear that digital has created a massive resolution a revolution over the past decade in fact I think when you look at what's happening in terms of seamless experience across channels, you know, this concept of showrooming, but online, offline, and online shopping, best of both worlds, if you will, getting in a sense of an immediate reward, getting what I want, how I want it, and where I want it, and us finding ways to make sure that happens, but also personalizing and tailoring the experience so that if someone feels it's, it's very intimate. One of the things that Tori consistently talks about is this concept of genuine, authentic relationships and that we have to, we're, we're, we are a luxury apparel company and footwear and accessories and whatever else we're going to be as time goes by. And the fact is we don't want to be a transaction driven business. We want people to feel like they're part of a lifestyle brand. 
For that to happen, we really need to enable our store associates, our, our key colleagues throughout the business, and, and, and quite honestly, our leadership team to understand what's really happening and how people are feeling about our brand, our experience, our product. So the next slide points to really our, our principles and values, if you will, in terms of how we see ourselves within the organization. We are a unifying thread that ultimately connects people, regardless of function and or geography, around execution and process. At the end of this, what we're trying to accomplish is a high-performing work environment that is very much focused on customer centricity. Collaborating and ensuring that we are looking at things from a solution-oriented perspective, always doing what's best for the business and making sure that we're putting people in a position to be successful is our key principle. We have to do that at all times. And quite honestly, that means in many cases not speaking from it from a technology perspective, but looking at it in terms of what's truly best for the business. I'm very fortunate to have a team that understands and, and aligns with that, not just in terms of technology, but way beyond in terms of the leadership team. So when we talk about investments, we talk about innovation, there's always a tech part of that for sure, but what we're really talking about is enabling business value and experience and ultimately continuing to differentiate our environment so that our client wants to stay with us. So you can see many of the words that are up on the screen. I mean, they're kind of like motherhood and apple pie, but we actually live to them. And quite frankly, we believe in it. And when we look to build our team and recruit our teams, our way in the world, our design, our relationships, our impact are critical. And if people can't align and believe in this, then quite frankly, they can't be here. So it's always about the people. And if the people don't necessarily believe in what you're doing, they probably shouldn't be here. So my advice to all organizations, you, we all have a span of influence that we have direct control over. What you have most control over are your, is your team. And if you're not building the best possible team, then regardless of what you put on the slide or how you talk about something, you're not gonna be successful. It's always about people's ability to adopt and ex execute and help lead change throughout the organization. Great. Mike, so uh, one last question for, for, for you here. So um, let's, can you talk a little bit and share with the audience um, some specifics about how you're using the Google technology and how it's helped transform the business and who's using it? Well, I think when we talk about unifying threads and enabling our business team to operate at a higher performing level, we saw Google as, as a significant differentiator in terms of creating a culture of being able to share, iterate, collaborate and ultimately deliver against real business process opportunities. One of the most important things we do, and Helene is going to take us through this in great detail, is open new stores. The, the fact is that ultimately we can do all these amazing things with digital, we can create great content and it can feel amazing, but if someone walks in the store and the store under, underwhelms the experience, then they probably aren't going to come back. Opening a store in our business is very complicated. It actually touches numerous people. Google provided a platform for us between linking not only the teams that were responsible for delivering it, but also helping us in terms of getting visibility and transparency to where we actually were in that process. We're adopting Google from a collaborative uh, platform perspective. You know, I, I, I can't say it's gonna replace what we're currently using completely, and that was never the intention. It was all about creating a set of capabilities and functionalities that enable our teams to operate at a higher level. We happen to think your platform enables that. So we use things like Maps, Drive, Docs, Search internally to help enable that behavior and ultimately in, uh, create an environment for people to perform more effectively. As Helena goes through her demonstration and talks to some of the detail, you'll see that we have a plan, and Surge can also speak to this, to do much more with your platform and ultimately take it into a place where people intuitively default to working to working directly with each other. I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, in my past lives working for companies where you really didn't work necessarily through video or chat or hangouts and you work more from audio conferences and through linear email, it's incredibly difficult to get things done and we're all being challenged to do more with less. What I love about your platform is that if I need to get a hold of somebody, I can reach out to them pretty quickly. And I think that live interaction and being able to iterate real time just creates a much better performing capability and leads to better results. Great, Mike. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that and for sharing uh, some details on uh, what you've currently done and what you're planning to do. Um, just a quick reminder to our audience that we'd love to hear from you on social media that you can just 
uh, by doing hashtag on Google, one word, um, to ask your to ask your questions. So, um, Hawina, so let's transition over to you. Uh, I uh, understand that you've been leading a very exciting initiative within uh, the Tory Birch Transformation Office around improving your new store opening process. Uh, you've been opening quite a few stores lately, and our audience would love to hear from you on what you're doing to manage the various vendors, people, et cetera, you know, assets that are involved in opening a new stores, especially when yours are spread throughout the globe. Yes, thank you, Rhonda. Uh, actually, before we moved into the Google environment, a huge challenge for us uh, with the opening of the new stores at Tory Birch was a lack of connection. And that lack of connection was not only to the amount of information that we all needed to get our job done, but actually being connected to one another. And with the current spike that we were seeing with new store opening projects, and especially for this year alone, that was something that was definitely cause for concern. Um, I think as we began to sort of look at it and realize, okay, we currently have 200 plus persons internally, not even including uh, external vendors that we partner with, whether they're a task owner or they're part of the decision-making process, there was still just this one basic need in regards to what we do that we weren't fulfilling. And that was the need for information. And it was just quickly realized if we can satisfy this need for information, we would end up having a very successful uh, management of the process to actually open our stores. And as we started to get working on this, there was something that we realized we actually took for granted. It was just sort of this natural assumption that everyone knew the requirements, everyone knew what was expected of them, uh, everyone understood the big picture and how it all came together and everyone just knew the schedules and how to plan accordingly. And you know what we realized very quickly, Rhonda? That wasn't the case. I mean, it just became very apparent that over the last nine years, we grew so quickly that opening stores was something that we had done very organically. But in order to continue moving forward and supporting the growth and needs of the business, that wouldn't work for us anymore. So we needed to take something that we've always done. I mean, after all, that's what we do at Tory Burch. We open stores, but we needed to find a new way to do it, sort of reinventing the wheel even though sometimes people think that's not always a good thing, but in this case it is. So after taking a look at this and saying, okay, we're a luxury business, what's the one luxury we don't have? That's time. And in terms of making all of these moving pieces come together at once and seeming as seamless for everyone as we needed it to be, we were missing that internal reference point where everyone could go and find all of this information and see, okay, what is the actual process? What is expected of me? What is it that we need to do? Where are the drawings? Where are these images? Where's the actual project plan? And how are we going to make this information available to them outside of email? Like how archaic is it for something as big as a process involving this many people that we're still using email? So, Hence, the Google New Store opening site was born, and that is what we have. And we actually went live with that uh, June of this year. And so now having the Google New Store opening site and sort of following along with what Mike was saying and following the same omni-channel approach that was taken for our business with the external customer, we're now able to provide an experience for our own customers internally here at Tory, our peers. Right. And so now a huge part of that is they're now able to have access to this information regardless of where they are in the world and regardless of what device they're using, they'll always be connected to the information and each other. So, Hywina, this it's really great. Um, you know, it's a really great story. Uh, trying to coordinate 200 internal people and hundreds of external people, I'm sure, was an absolute challenge for you. I understand that you... Um, are going to give our viewers a sneak peek at your solution and how it's used within Tori today. So I'll turn it over to you to walk through that. All right. So what your viewers should be looking at right now is the store profile. Uh, I remember when we first demoed the site with Mike and Serge, Mike said specifically, this is our bang for the buck. So this is it, what you're looking at. And essentially, this is the DNA of a Tory Birch boutique. You said brick and mortar, and this is it. This is every single component 
of that store, of that location that we're actually compiling from all of the persons that work internally and some of our external vendors so we can all put it together. And the amazing part of taking the approach and using a Google environment and network, so we were able to say, you know what, how can we take this one step further? And yes, it's our job and something we must do, but let's create an experience around that. So what we did is even down to the same font in the background image, it is exactly identical to the Tory Burch online um, website. So you know what, now we're providing customers an experience when they're shopping online, but now our peers, because they're using the new store opening site, have an experience as well. And so instead of shopping for clothing or product, they're able to shop for information. But of course, this is at no charge, it's free. They don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> And so a cool thing about the store profile from there, we have two other uh, features from Google that we're able to use, and one of the best ones is Google Maps. And so what you're looking at right now is for the Las Vegas store. The Las Vegas store, we relocated uh, February of this year. And so the, how cool is this, that with Google Maps from the store profile page, they're able to just click, and with the click of one button, you're now right inside of the mall. So talk about visibility, talk about knowing who our neighbors are and who we're right next to. And I mean, that's just a huge feature. And you know what's interesting, Rhonda, is when we uh, demoed the site with the retail team and we showed them the Google Maps feature and how it went inside the mall, that got a round of applause. They were all like, oh man, this is so cool. And we were like, wait, but you all have Google Maps. This isn't anything new. But again, because we were able to sort of make what their job is and something they've always done fresh and new, it brought that excitement to it, and that was something that just takes it to the next level. Um, another feature that we enjoy using from the store profile page outside of uh, Google Maps is Google Drive. So another good part of having the Google Drive feature is now we're able to create these uh, folder structures for all of this information that we're collecting again from not only our internal peers, but even external vendors, and say, you know what, now there's a little bit more structure and ease and efficiency of finding information, and it's no more uh, what we had probably previously in the past, was almost like a black hole of uh, folders on the share drive, and each team was able to, able to name their own folder, whatever they wanted. We now have consistency, and it's more organized, and it just makes everyone lives that much easier when they are looking and searching for information. And probably one of the best things about Google Drive is the tracking. We're now able to track status and you're sort of able to see when persons are submitting information, when they did review a document. And so a cool part about that is it sort of breeds a level of accountability in the workplace and we're all sort of able to be each other's checks and balance throughout the process. Great, uh, Hawina. Thank you so much for uh, sharing some uh, details on the solution that you've uh, that you've uh, implemented for new store openings. Um, do you have any future plans uh, for the solution or the site? We do. So we are uh, looking to hopefully get started with phase two uh, very soon in the near future. And the great part about phase two will be the fact that we're able to socialize the process internally even more. And we'll be able to push alerts out to persons now to support the process. So right now, the way it currently is, they're having to sort of come to the site. And that is how they're retrieving the updates. But once we do move forward with phase two, we'll actually be pushing those alerts out uh, in the Google Plus uh, and Google community. And so that, that will be great. And then also what we're looking to do is with the same store profile page that you saw with the DNA for Tory Birch Boutique, we're actually looking to uh, create that as well for on a global level for the doors in which Tory Birch is sold. So we're looking to expand that to include uh, wholesale, shopping shops, and partnerships. And so when you want to quantify that, Rhonda, and we're talking about easily about a thousand doors, I think it's safe to say that Tory Burch and Google could probably be working very closely for a long time to come. <laughs> well, we're certainly uh, certainly glad to hear that. And on behalf of all the, the, the females, all of us that are Tory Burch fans, we're glad to see that you're opening more stores, uh, going into more <laughs> locations, and uh, that you can hopefully use the solution to open stores a little bit quicker so we can get out there and shop some more. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about digital. Um, you know, as you saw in the, as we saw in the video early on, uh, Tory Burch uh, was an early pioneer in the digital era, moving online to e-commerce, 
social media, et cetera. Uh, and Serge, I understand that you've been working on some really interesting um, efforts, uh, some new capabilities that you're looking to bring um, to TroyBirch.com and to mobile. Um, can you share this with our audience? Sure. Uh, so we've been working on a uh, virtual store. It's a uh, concept right now, but we think it adds, uh, has some real value to it. Uh, and basically the goal of that was really to bring our on uh, in-store experience or the, the brick and mortar, um, and you saw some images of that in, in the uh, video in the, in the beginning, um, online. Uh, we have a real strong online business, a real um, broad customer base that's global, but not everyone um, has a store nearby. Um, so this is an opportunity to really bring that store experience, which is very distinctive, um, online. As, as Tori noted in the video in the beginning, the distinctive uh, orange do uh, doors, the uh, lucite, the brass, well, this is an opportunity to bring all that online and allow the users to get that same in-store experience, but do it online. Um, so what you see on the screen now is actually um, the, uh, the demo, our, our virtual store, and if you're able to navigate through the store, um, we'll see a panoramic view here, where you can see not only the product, but just the environment. Um, and that is what's very distinctive about the, the Toy Birch stores. So um, as we pan around here, you see the product, you'll, you see some attributes with the logo um, that highlight some of the products there. And then you're able to actually navigate completely through the, the store um, environment itself. Um, you'll see there's a, there was a purple arrow um, coming around here that allows you to get to uh, different parts of the store. So here we're going to the back of the store. Um, you can also then navigate up stairs through that. So it's just as if you were in the store, but we're bringing this on online. Um, so it's been uh, you know a great concept. We we believe that the experience um, that you'll get from this is you know looking at it as an overall brand experience, um, really to elevate the overall. Um, uh, immersive experience for the store that today when you go online, although we have that strong business, it's not as um, immersive and it doesn't have all the, the attributes that you get from within the store, that relationship building that, uh, that Mike mentioned, that this is kind of adds to that overall brand experience. I mean, Serge, I think this is amazing. I love this user experience. I know as a Tory Burch shopper, I, I would definitely use this, uh, you know, online and on mobile to uh, immerse myself more into the brand and shop more. Um, so I can imagine that, you know, implementing something like this or, you know, coming up with this concept and keeping it current would bring some technical and business challenges. Is there anything, you know, what have you experienced so far in trying to bring this to life? Well, there, there certainly were some challenges, as you can see in the opening video where you were a uh, panoramic view of the store. Um, if you probably, you probably didn't notice, but there's lots of mirrors in there. So just the fact that we had to pull seamlessly all the images in from the camera heads as we were doing the imaging um, was not a, an easy task. So the assembly and the, the preparation of that um, was um, difficult. We actually piloted a lot of different uh, camera technologies to do this. And um, we think the overall experience though is, uh, is, is really good. We also, um, because our users are global, and Mike mentioned a, a, a real strong mobile base, we had to make sure that the performance of this around the globe is consistent, that the form factor is delivered in, in the, on the device um, um, or the desktop as we want it, and the performance um, is there as well, whether you're in China, whether you're in New York City. Uh, so, um, you know, those are some challenges on the, I'll say the technical side. On the business side, we change our floor sets four to six times a year. So the challenge that we have ahead of us is how do we look at this if we're gonna uh, continue to update the store? Do we go back to each store on a regular basis, reshoot the imagery? Um, so those are some business challenges that we're still working through to say, how do we keep the product um, and, the, and the virtual tour fresh um, so that it matches the online um, product that we have as well. So those are um, some of the challenges. Okay. So, uh, so Serge, where do you, um, this is obviously a great experience. Uh, I'm sure our viewers will be looking forward to, to seeing it come to life, but where do you see this digital solution going long-term in the future? How would you like to see it evolve? So we have a number of things kind of on our, our, our cadre of, of list of uh, enhancements that we, that we see. You know, the first is, you know, tying the 
virtual store experience to a e-commerce transaction. So today, while we do have the content up there for um, the product data, it does not drive you to a transaction. And so that is something that we, we certainly want to do. Um, we also, from a technology uh, perspective, other attributes that we'd like to uh, dive into, one being 3D. So potentially looking at how do we take what is a, a, a virtual tour and potentially allowing a, a person to vi view a product maybe in, in 3D. Uh, also adding search capabilities. Today, you navigate through the store as you saw through uh, the purple arrows or clicking on uh, some of the logos for the attributes. Um, but adding some search capabilities, so if you're actually looking for a particular product, um, you can type in a SKU and it would actually take you through the store as if you were being guided by an associate to a, a placement on a shelf where there's a handbag or there's a tunic hanging on a rack, something like that. So uh, essentially, you know, continuing to elevate that experience. We also know that we want to add a lot more content. Um, today, what you have in there is product content or product attributes. Um, but as the opening video showed that the experience in the store is like being in a home and we get a lot of questions on why did we choose a certain couch or why did we choose a certain color scheme. We believe that we can add a lot more content um, in the site which talks to not necessarily the product but overall attributes of the store itself and the store experience itself. So, so a laundry list of, of areas that um, we'd like to dive into. Um, we think that um, this is something we, we can bring online and, and we think it will really help elevate the overall brand experience and ultimately um, bring, help conversion, um, help uh, bring the, the online shopper to a, a transaction. Great. Thank you so much for sharing and for giving our audience a sneak peek at what we can soon hope to uh, expect to see live online. Uh, so, um, so Mike, back to you. Uh, uh, I know we had uh, we had we had some questions from our viewers, and it's been asked several times. So we thought we'd uh, give you uh, a question here. So, as in talking about digital, what are your thoughts on uh, what Tory Burch's biggest digital challenge will be over the next few years? Well, I, I think. You know, it, when, when something is working well, there's, there's a massive desire to do more and our ability to really continue to innovate while our company grows and expands will, will be a challenge. I think without question, you know, being able to remain nimble and agile as you become bigger and potentially more complicated is, is always that, uh, that, that, magical, that magical sauce, if you will, in terms of getting it to the right place. My feeling, is that ultimately what we have to be able to do is constantly stay focused on the customer and this concept of customer centricity. And, and if we really believe that our business model is all about establishing genuine, authentic, and true relationships, and that we want to drive those relationships, I think Serge and Helena did a great job representing some of the core principles of who we are as a company, but this concept of educating and allowing people to experience the brand is it, as we innovate that, we have to be comfortable continuing to take risk and allowing ourselves to quite frankly fail at times. And it's okay if we do, because that's how we're going to learn and continue to stay on the forefront. You know, ultimately, Rhonda, you know, I could give a very simple answer and say it's all about the people, but, but that's not such a simple answer. It really is all about the people. It's the right team, the right leadership, and the right focus in regards to how we're trying to continue to evolve and help Tory build this next great American heritage lifestyle brand, which we believe we have humbly an opportunity to go after. A lot of work to do, <laughs> big road ahead, but, but we feel really good about what we've been able to do so far. Um, so, so great. You know, I would uh, like to you know thank all of our uh, our speakers, Hawina, uh, Serge, and Mike, for spending the time today, for sharing your stories giving us a, a peek at some of the things that are going on at Terry Birch. Um, I know, Serge, we had talked about ahead of time that you were, you were interested in getting some feedback from the audience. Uh, yes, so that, that would be great if we can uh, get some feedback from, from our audience here, if they can uh, you know, post their comments and, and what they think of the, the virtual store experience at the bottom here. That, that would be uh, fantastic. Thank you for the, yeah. the reminder, Rhonda. Yeah, so you know, to the audience, we've received a lot of questions on hashtag on Google. Um, we do have people online that are going to answer those questions. Unfortunately, we're out of live time um, uh, with our hangout just wrapping up at uh, 1.45. So again, I wanted to thank everybody 
for joining today. Um, this is the, our final our final Hangout on Air in our live series, and uh, look to hear from us and see some interesting things from Tori Birch. Thank you, Rhonda. R Rhonda, this is Mike. Thanks so much. And I really want to thank the team for making this happen, Serge and Helena, obviously, for being present, but also the new store opening team, Jim Hanson, Jane Gould, Jillian Migliori, and, and Alex Richardson, who was really key in terms of driving the digital store. I think, you know, again, uh, I'm, we're so fortunate to have the team that we do, and I'm thrilled with the progress that we're making. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.